So I guess this is the start of my teardrop camper build series. Uh, in this series we're going to build a, a teardrop camper that's not going to be a teardrop, it's going to be more or less of an overland trailer. It's not going to have any curved features, nothing that looks like a teardrop because I started to build one of those a long time ago, gave up on it after I was putting the metal roof on, sold the whole thing, and gave up. So I want to build one that has no curves on it because getting the galley to work on that was just ridiculous and it was just a nightmare. So. I think straight lines are going to be a lot easier for this. It's going to be more or less an overland trailer. Hopefully it doesn't take all too long to build. I think I have everything I need to finish it. The only thing I don't have is the fiberglass I'm going to put over it to waterproof it and the bed liner, which I'll just order that off Amazon and whenever I need it. Um, but as far as the electrical components, the wiring, the plywood, the, the front tongue box, the air vent, the windows, the doors, I have, I think, everything I need. Um, I might need a few more 2x4s, but at the price of wood right now and it's uh, May, the end of May in 2021 and the price of 2x4 right now for untreated normal 2x4 is over $13 a board. So it's a little bit ridiculous um, what prices are right now so I'm trying not to buy excess wood if I can help it. But I'm going to show you pretty much what I want to do in this video here. Uh, this is kind of like the intro. So to start off I have a uh, Harbor Freight trailer. It's just the, uh, I put that on there upside down. I'll probably fix that. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. But it's just the, uh, standard utility trailer. It's not the heavy duty one. It's these, just the normal lightweight 4x8 trailer from Harbor Freight. Um, it comes with four lug wheels that you normally put on it. But I have got some 33s off of a Jeep. That I want to repaint and use as my side wheel. I got some replacement hubs to adapt to the, the five lug bolt pattern. Um, the only thing is the spindle is too close to the trailer. So I'm going to have to extend the axle out a little bit. That's not going to be too bad. I'll just cut it and pull it out. But I plan to cut it probably in the center expands measure how much it needs to come apart and then weld and brace it with uh, some square tubing for the bottom I saw this stuff it's called HDPE high density polyethylene it seems way more waterproof than marine game marine grade plywood and it was cheaper so I went ahead and bought this to go on the bottom of the trailer just basically because it was like half the price it was only like $50 a sheet versus about $100 for a half inch sheet of plywood the only downside to this is it expands and contracts, I guess, a lot with heat. Um, so the temperature changes, it expands. But I don't think it's going to be a, too big of an issue. I don't know how much it's going to expand and stuff. So I'm just going to deal with it, and if it becomes an issue, I'll take it off and put it, put a piece of plywood underneath it or something. Um, the end goal is not to be using this trailer. This is kind of just so I can get started. I'm going to be putting these bolts into the base of the frame and so that way I can unbolt the, from the bottom, I can unbolt the trailer from the, the frame and put another frame that I'm going to build that's going to be a lot more heavy duty. I think I want to go for an axle-less design. Um, I have a friend who's wanting to build a teardrop as well or a square drop or whatever you want to call it, whatever I'm building. He wants me to build mine first before he builds his so that way he has an idea of what it's going to take to put it together, figure out what I screw up and what I learn along the way before he builds his. And then I'll probably end up just selling him this trailer when I'm done. I do have a tongue box that's gonna go in the front. I just got it from Tractor Supply. It does stick out quite a bit. So I might have to extend the tongue a little bit, which won't be an issue. The trailer frame that I'll build eventually, it's gonna have a longer tongue. Um, I wanna eventually be able to put a Grom on the tongue. Uh, so I can take it with me and the frame I will I'll build out steps on the side for fenders that you can step on on the heavier duty trailer so in this video I just want to try to get the floor done and maybe the walls cut but I don't have high hopes the floor I'm just gonna frame it out with some two by fours uh, drill the holes bolt it down I'm gonna liquid nail this polyethylene to the two by four frame then I have a piece of half inch plywood that will go on top of that with the insulation in it. But I think I'll put that in later. Um, but until then, 
let's get started, I guess. All right, so I have cut the some two by fours. Well, actually, I didn't cut the these ones yet. The two on the outside, they're gonna be three fourths inch shorter than eight feet, and then I have three fourths of an inch on either side of these. Oh, well, it doesn't look like it yet because it's not sitting there right. So I can put my outer wall down and screw to that. Um, and then the frame will sit on top of that. So I'll build the frame an inch and a half below the outer wall so it kind of lips up there. Um, for my, I don't know what you'll call them, spars or whatever in the center, I'm taking 2 by 4s and ripping them in half, mainly to preserve wood. And there doesn't need to be that much weight in there, or that much... Uh, that much wood in there. I've went ahead and put pocket holes in here in each of these. I haven't screwed them together yet. For all my wood joints, I'm going to use Tight Bond 3 uh, wood glue. So that way it's all waterproof and everything's all sturdy. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to need to get under the trailer and mark where the holes are under this polyethylene. You can see here in the corners there's one there, there's one in the center, there's one there on each of these all the way down. Um, so there's a, like a, a support there and then I'm going to drill up through the polyethylene and then that's what's going to determine where this piece of wood goes. And then I'm going to drill through that and then put one of these, these like countersunk bolt things into the wood and then bolt it all down before I put the half inch plywood on top. Um, I probably should put more spars in between here, but I'm not too worried about it because I'm gonna have inch and a half foam in all these spots and then plywood on top of it. So the plywood on top of it is going to stiffen it up and you won't have really any soft spots because like in the center, it won't be bouncy because there's an inch and a half of foam underneath of it. So I think it will be fine. And like I said, I'm not completely sold on the polyethylene on the bottom. We're going to run with it and see how it, how it is in a year or so. And then if I need to replace it at some point in time, we'll just unbolt it, lift it up, take that piece off, put a piece of plywood underneath of it, and put it back down. Alright, as you can see, I've drilled holes from the bottom up to locate the holes from the, that are in the frame. Um, what I'm going to do now is like measure them and then start building the frame over top of those holes. Once I get the frame together, I'm going to drill the holes all the rest of the way through with a 3 8 inch drill bit. That's the size bolts I'm using and threaded inserts I have. Threaded inserts, that's the word I'm looking for. But I'm going to finish drilling those through, uh, smack in those threaded inserts, and then just bolt it down, I guess, and go from there. So let's do that. Quick little update. This is not working as well as I was wanting it to. Should have just went with plywood. Polyethylene is being difficult. So I have marked out, I don't know if you can see those faint green lines, the uh, insulation that I need to cut to put in these little slots. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that way, this right here is not attached. I put heavy duty liquid nail down. I don't know if it's going to stick to the polyethylene, but we're going to try. I mean, it has a textured surface, so I would hope. So I'm going to cut the foam, put it in there, flip it over, and put more screws into the polyethylene, uh, into the wood to help flatten it out. Alright, so I got them cut. Let's see if they fit.
and just like that. They're not perfect, but they're in there pretty snugly, and that'll do just fine. Cutting out with the circular saw is definitely the easiest way of doing that. It makes a complete and utter mess. That's why I did it outside, but it cuts through it like a hot knife through butter. So I very crudely used just a paddle bit and countersunk these holes a little bit so that these inserts would fit. I put one screw in them so they wouldn't turn uh, once they were in the hole when I was tightening them or loosening them. So I went ahead and did that to all of them and now whenever I get some bolts I have to run to the hardware store tomorrow and get some 2, eight, two inch 3 8 inch bolts and then I'll be able to screw those in. and. All right, to conclude part one of framing the floor, I have bolted down and cut off the tops of the bolts so it sits flush with the floor. I've put a screw in so whenever I, if I remove this at some point, this won't just spin in here. I have cut off these pieces of the trailer, so I need to like flap disc this down. But I've got it completely bolted down and then the, the, the frames attached to the trailer permanently now. Um, the next step, I want to do, I'm going to start now, but it'll be in the next video. We're going to start cutting the walls. Probably the most nerve-wracking thing, because it's really going to start shaping the rest of the trailer. Uh, click on the next video to watch that. Remember to like and subscribe. Follow me through this nightmare of a project. I'm a bus